Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. So the traveling caregiver part came from the fact that I would, I could travel on the phone, I could travel on the email, I could travel to your home, I could travel wherever you needed me to, and I could at least try to help you get somewhere to where you could feel that you're getting some sense of control back in your environment because it can feel so out of control when you're fighting disease and disorder, you know? Yes. <laughs> so it's like, how do we bring balance back? How do I find balance for you? Where are, what are the things that are triggering you to, to lose the controls that you're not having anymore? And, you know, with ALS, ALS is a, it's a terrible thing. It's, I mean, you lose everything from the neck down, you have your brain left, but, um, you know, virtually she's stage four ALS patient. She's immobile from the neck down. She can't speak to me other than through a communication device. And that's if she's feeling like it. So usually we use a lot of mental telepathy and, uh, <laughs> eye looks and body language reads and intuition and, um, basically just basing everything on her baseline. Where, where is her happy place? and then trying to keep her at that happy place, you know? <laughs> so I know that's the same with Alzheimer's. So. Yeah. Well, I'm always so, trying to try to keep my mom in her happy place. And oh my right? goodness. It's, well, I visited her yesterday and the plan was, I'm a Rotarian and I go after my Rotary meetings. We didn't have a meeting yesterday. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go earlier and I will go. My plan was about noon. And they would be done with lunch and then I would take her to a restaurant and I would eat and get her something small, you know, to snack on whatever, just so we had that nice socialization. Cause she's, she's still verbal, but nothing she says makes sense. It, mm -hmm. it sounds like it makes sense. And people will look at me and like, Oh, you know, what is she talking about? Like, give me the historical context kind of question. And it's like, there is no historical context because this makes no sense. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I try to give her this nice visit. So yesterday we were, I get disrupted. Just like, just as I'm leaving the door, the landscaper comes and he's got questions. I'm like, dude, I'm hungry. I need to go get my mom so I can get some food. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that makes no sense, but it, it worked. <laughs> and I got there like quarter to one and she's still having lunch. I'm like, they normally have lunch at like 11 because I usually <laughs> can't get there early enough to actually eat with them. Right. So I was like, she didn't see me. So I'm like, okay. And I went out in the courtyard, did a couple things on my phone, went back in. Most of the residents were done. She was still eating. She's also at the stage of all, she's pretty late Alzheimer's where she has, a, she has difficulty with eating with utensils, but she also has difficulty eating with her hands. So that's, that's a challenge. Mm. And so most of the residents were done. The tables and the floors were disgusting. They were just uh. covered in food. And I'm like, uh. there's no way I'm eating with these people in this. Cause it's just, I mean, I'm not a germaphobe and I mean, I'm a neat freak, but not that bad. And it was just, it was just too much too much. I'm like, she's still eating. Okay. And I'm like, at this point I'm starving because it's now like one o'clock and I usually eat lunch around 1130 noon. So it's getting rather late. And I'm like, okay, well, this is just completely screwing up all the plans that I had made for today. <laughs> so I, I went to lunch and the plan was go get mom, have lunch, visit with her for about an hour, drop her back off. And then I was going to reward myself with shopping at Michael's and maybe Joanne Fabrics because we've just moved and you know, we have like a lot of neutrals. So I needed to find the pops of color. That was the plan, but I had to pass Michael's to get back to her. Okay. I'm like, that's just <laughs> dumb. I'm like, you know what? It's not gonna make much difference at this point. So I did my Michael stuff, which was, I'm like, yesterday was such a Monday. I go there, <laughs> there's inventory people blocking every aisle. I'm like, really? I'm just going home. <laughs> Just going home. I'm giving up on today. I'm just done. not working. <laughs> no, but I persevered and I went and I had, you know, I, I got mom and you know, the, um, I went to Panera and they always like, Oh, do you want a pastry for 99 cents? To which I always say no, cause I do not need the sugar, but I got that for her, you know? So we sat there on the bench in the sunshine. I'm in Northern California. So the sun was very warm. The breeze was quite chilly. So the combination made it very pleasant. We sat out on the bench and she just kind of just sat there eating the cookie, 
Hopefully she got more cookie than I did. That was the plan. <laughs> and she just wasn't like in the mood to talk. So I'm like, okay, I've learned the hard way not, not to push. So, you know, we were done with, done with the cookie and she said something and I said, I agreed with her. And then she said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, I just agreed with you. <laughs> and I said, how about, I said, such a nice day. How about we go for a walk? And this is where my mom's Alzheimer's is really interesting because she always wants to make sure that we're doing what you want and whatever you need. It's always you, 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 you. Right. It's like, well, I don't want to be here and I don't want to sit here with you not talking. <laughs> I don't want to do any of this, <laughs> but it's necessary. Yeah. So she said, whatever you want. I'm like, fine. We're walking. Cause she's had a lot of pain when walking and yeah. she didn't seem to have a lot of pain yesterday. So I thought, okay, I've got a dog with serious arthritis. And if we don't walk him regularly, he gets, yeah. you know, it, he goes downhill. So same thing with mom. It's like, Aww. My daughter will laugh because she wasn't planned. I had no idea how to raise kids. So I just <laughs> raised her the same way I'd raised puppies. Worked. <laughs> and when she, we had an actual eight week old puppy and she was 14. She's like, you weren't kidding. I'm like, no, I was not kidding. It's the same, same theory. You know, you just can't leave children in cages. That's bad. Can't leave them home alone. That's not cool. But yeah, for the most part, it's pretty much the same. And so I, you know, kind of did the same thing with mom. Like, She's not having pain with walking. We'll walk. And we did. We walked all the way around the residence and we got back and it was about three thirty, four 4 o'clock. She starts getting really crabby. So I'm like, okay, it's time for me to go back to work. And I, you know, took her back in and that was, that was the end of the day. Except that as I was leaving, there was a gentleman from the assisted living part of the community sitting on the bench with a cute little dog. So I ended up talking to him for half an hour. Oh. Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, this was not the way I planned my day, but it worked out okay. Mom and I had a decent visit. We didn't have any, any words. So, you know, that was cool. Yeah. So I, th that's um, good. I got your email with the, I think we should talk about the nutritional support. Cause I do wonder okay. sometimes I yeah. know for myself, well, I'll give you a little quick history that most of the listeners, if they're regular should know is like 10 years ago, I lost a hundred pounds. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Thank God for my knees. Right. And everything else. My dad's side of the family has a lot of diabetes and I'd had a photography client who was a doctor. She said, you're overweight. You have a family history. You're screwed. And I said, this is where the, this is where I'm like my mom. I'm like, mm -mm, I will show you not screwed. That's and it, right. <laughs> it took effort. And it, you know, because people say, Oh, eat low carb, do this, do that. None of that stuff worked. I had to find the path that worked for me mm -hmm. and it took a little effort but I found it and I kept off like 90 pounds of it for about four years. And then I hit menopause and my dad was in the hospital and then he died. Well, the dog died. My daughter moved out. My dad died. We put my mom in memory care all in three and a half. Months. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was a fun way to start 2017. And you know, so I, I have a few extra to take back off. And now that we're settled into the new place, I will get back on my bike and make that happen. So I know personally, if I do not get a good night's sleep, I wake up and my brain is going, let's have some donuts. Let's have this <laughs> stuff that I don't eat. Yeah. It's like donut, donut, donut. I'm like, I don't eat donuts and it's not going to help. <laughs> Look brain, you need a nap, not crappy food. And I just find it fascinating. It's like, thankfully I know why it's doing it. It's looking for quick fuel. Yep. But don't, I don't, I'm not even sure sugar even gives me quick fuel. So, mm -mm. <laughs> so you said you put your, this gal, the ALS on a plant-based diet. Yes. So let's it's talk. very, um, it's very oh. similar to the, um, to the mind diet. So I don't know if you're familiar with the mind diet. I am, but um, you can, you can give a highlight just in case some, this is somebody's first episode. So basically for me, it's just like saying Mediterranean without all the grains. <laughs> that's what it is. That works. So it's because I don't, um, and that's actually, because I had diabetes type two, um, through my, through my journey with Anne, her sister has now been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and I have a friend, a really good friend whose mom's been diagnosed with dementia. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to go through, walk the journey with them too, and, um, try to help, help them with some strategies. And um, what I found was, is that it was all the same. 
Um, and that diabetes type two can turn into diabetes type three, which is actually Alzheimer's and dementia. So who knew that my sugar problem could eventually turn into something really bad for me someday. So sugar, you know, was definitely something I had to make sure to get off the menu as fast as possible and then jump to the mind diet. So the mind diet is the Mediterranean, Mediterranean diet, which is plant-based. It would be green leafy vegetables. It would be um, sprouted, oh, I say sprouted seeds because I don't think you should eat seeds unless they've been sprouted. And I don't think you should eat nuts unless they've been soaked. But that's just because those, those specific seeds and nuts, they have a, a phytic acid on the outside which protects their shell. And when they get activated, those, that acid comes off. Well, if we just eat it, we're depending on our stomach digestive acids to get rid of that, which actually throws a neurotoxin in the mix. So your brain's like, what am I supposed to do with that? So sometimes people might say, I can't eat nuts. It always makes my tummy get all bound up. Or I can't eat seeds, same thing. So if they feel like that's happening, probably a good chance they need to break their seeds and nuts down before they eat them. So I generally sprout and um, soak all of them to the point where I will blend them and make nut cheese before I'll eat them right out of a bag. Just because it seems to, again, it's what works for you. Everybody has to find what works for them. So with the Mediterranean or the mind diet, um, I removed rice, no rice. Rice turns into sugar. So That's little true. story. I, I used to have hypoglycemia and then it turned into diabetes type two because I had a gluten allergy. So I decided to go get all the gluten products at the store, at the, bo the boxes. They all say gluten-free, 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 gluten-free. The trouble is, is that it's processed food. So it's not really food. And it, the other trouble is, is that it's mostly made of rice. Rice converts to sugar. Oh, that's true. I never thought of that. I mean, so I knew that, but it never year. clicked. <laughs> Within one year, I had diabetes type two and I gained 40 pounds. <laughs> so, oh, those are bad. So, you know, I, I got really sick one day and uh, put, ended up in the bed for 30 days. I could not move out of bed without my husband's assistance. I was so weak. My body had just shut down. Diabetes type two, endometriosis, chronic fatigue, allergies, <laughs> migraines, and I get, get bit by a black widow. All oh, at the Lord. same time. <laughs> oh, and I had stones, skull stones too. Oh, it was a bad, it was a bad day that day. <laughs> so like, anyway, I'm just giving up food. <laughs> I know. And actually, to be honest with you, for 30 days, all I had was two shakes a day and marshmallow root tea for 30 days solid. You'll have to tell me about the tea in a minute. Yeah, I will. So so the mind diet, uh, what I did was I jump started the mind diet by doing green smoothie shakes. So I did green smoothie shakes, no bananas, no nut, no sweet fruits. I took all the sweet fruits off the table. Matter of fact, the only fruits that I was allowed to have was a grapefruit and berries. And that's mm. it. And greens. So, and lemons. So literally I could make a green smoothie with kale and spinach and all these wonderful greens. And then I would put a grapefruit in it because it would make it taste better. Which is and a little surprising. I'm, 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 I'm I know. To... Imagine this. <laughs> I'm trying. It's, and it's not going it's, well. It, 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 it was very interesting to start the program. But after 30 days of doing it, on the 30th day, literally on the 30th day, I had enough strength to stand up out of bed. I had detoxed the bad stuff out of my body finally. Um, or at least enough to give my body a chance to start functioning better again. And um, I was starting to absorb nutrients because I hadn't really been absorbing nutrients. So what I had found with my past diet was that even though I thought I was being healthy because <laughs> I was eating fruits and vegetables and gluten-free products, um, what I found was that for me, it didn't work at all. 100% did not work, took me down and made me very sick. And so once I got myself recovered from that, I realized after I started slowly introducing foods back into my diet, I stuck with fruits and vegetables, mostly vegetables to start off with. And I went for all the green kinds first. And then I worked my way back to the ones that were my favorites because <laughs> I figured my favorites were probably the ones that were bad for me. Probably. <laughs> they were, you know, <laughs> 
the ones that have the most sugar or whatever in it. So I tried to push all those to the side and just focused on the stuff that was on the low glycemic chart, you know. So low glycemic diet. And I did this low glycemic diet for probably six months um, to stabilize my diabetes. It took me six months before I felt like I was stable, that I didn't have to carry the almonds in my pocket just in case, you know, I had a crash or if I felt like I didn't have in or coconut oil, I would bring coconut oil with me and take a scoop of to- coconut oil to get energy. Ooh, but yuck. see <laughs> what happens, I know, but what, what was crazy is that I wasn't giving myself those fats. I was giving myself fruits and vegetables and gluten-free products. I had skipped all the fats. Um, I also stopped eating meat because meat was not working out for me. It was hurting me very badly. (laughs) And um, now to this day, I still do fish sometimes when I feel that I need it. And I do eggs when I feel that I need it. But what we did with Anne and her diet, because when she was in the hospital, she wasn't walking. And so our first agenda was, let's get her walking again. And we're we're like, I don't know if it's possible, but we're going to try everything we can. So we found a plant-based diet which ironically, there is one feeding tube formula out there that subscribes to the mind diet with the exception of they still use rice, which, so I'm in the process of actually creating my own formula because I think Anne's starting to not tolerate it. So Mm -hmm. I, so I'm going to create a formula that is exactly what we're doing minus the rice and see what that does for us. But in the meantime, right now, we're just, we're still utilizing it. And, uh, when it comes to, uh, there was a point I was going back to, hold on. Um, okay, so when we were in the hospital and we switched her to the plant-based diet, it was organic. It's a whole food plant-based. Um, it's called Liquid Hope Functional Functionary Formularies. Functional Formularies is the name of the company, Liquid Hope. And literally, it's a plant-based organic food recipe. It's, it's actually phenomenal. It had everything on there that I would say, yes, this is great. We should do this. And um, within one week of us switching her, you could see her skin color come back to normal. Mm -hmm. You could see her face start filling out again. Um, You could see her eyes get bright. By the end of the second week, she was sitting on the edge of her bed. By the end of the third week, she was walking the hallways at the hospital. That's amazing. We had her walking a football length. Uh, out of the hospital before she came home. She was in the hospital from January 2015 until uh, April 15th. And April 15th, she walked out of the hospital. That's and awesome. we had, yeah, we had her walking again until September when she fell again with pneumonia because, you know, you're battling all kinds of things when you've got a trach. So she ended up getting pneumonia again. But we still, pers- we still um, persevered with the diet. We were doing. Now, here's the catch. I don't know if you've heard of a Dr. Wallach, but Dr. Mm -hmm. Wallach is another doctor that I've um, got a few doctors that I've gone and listened to their talks, their speeches over and over and over again, because their information is just um, so important and so crucial. I wish that everybody would hear it. (laughs) We could really help a lot of people, I feel, with this. Um, There's Dr. Wallach. There's Dr. McCullough. There's Dr. Axe. um, Ty Bollinger. Um, he's not a doctor, but he's an advocate for Alzheimer's and cancer and finding a nutritional ways of helping people. But what I found uh, interesting is they all said one thing in common, eggs. They all said eggs. And so I went and I followed Dr. Wallach's formula and he said she would need 10 eggs a day. Oh, that's a lot of eggs. Right? And I'm like, that's crazy, but okay. So we found a farmer here close by that does not feed them grains, that lets them roam and eat bugs and all of that. They're pasture raised. So we go pick our, our, ra- our farm raised eggs up from her every week or two weeks. We go pick up our, our special load. <laughs> we bring it home. But we would do 10 eggs a day with her, and it's cooking the whites, but not cooking the yellows or leaving the yellows as loose as possible. Because there is this choline in the yellows, a lecithin that helps the myelin sheath in the brain repair itself. So the myelin sheath in the brain, when it can repair itself, the nerves can function better. Cognitive is better. 
nerve function is better, everything gets better. And it did. It worked. It absolutely worked. Um, we, let's see, Anne, last year, we, we've been slowing down the eggs because I don't feel that she needs as many, you know? Yeah, that's a Once, lot of eggs. It's a lot, yeah. So, like, after two years of doing that many eggs, we backed it way down to where it was, like, six a day, then it was four a day, and now we're down to three a day. So, um, but I, I think what had happened is she uh, had been exposed to so many toxicities, heavy metal toxicity with um, mercury and aluminum, things that had just really hurt her, her nerve and her brain function. So we keep doing that. We keep doing the plant-based. Uh, we don't do any grains. We do do lentils and beans, uh, adzuki beans. We do good carbs. We do uh, sweet potato or um, um, some good fats would be like avocado. Avocado oil is great because you can actually cook with it. It doesn't have a, it has a very high flash point. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to turn carcinogenic. Um, typically with any type of nerve disorder, we don't like using anything that has something that's going to clog up the arteries or the veins or the, the, the movement of the blood because the movement of the blood is so important. So we found that when you cook oils, that can slow, your, that, can slow that part part down in your body. So don't cook the oil if you don't need to. Put it in when you're done cooking so that way it's still cold compressed, it's still virgin, it's still organic, and it hasn't been cooked. And you're getting the benefits of that good fat, of those omegas. So focusing on the good fats, focusing on the plant-based diet, um, and then other nutritional aids that we might be able to throw in there, like we, minerals, minerals, minerals is such a huge thing that they don't talk to us. They tell you take your vitamins. <laughs> they don't say take your minerals. They say, take your vitamins and people think, oh, I'll just get my vitamins and that'll have everything I need, right? But the truth is, is that we're lacking a lot of minerals in our foods these days. It's not, the soils are depleted. Mm -hmm. We're not getting the same nutrient density that we were getting. So supplementing, to, supplementing with minerals is definitely crucial. Uh, so we supplement, supplement with both uh, trace minerals from Salt Lake and we also supplement with plant-based minerals, which we get from Dr. Wallach. And Dr. Wallach has a whole series that he talks about on how important minerals are um, and how that can help a person with their body functions. Just, just in the last two weeks, we had to go to the hospital again because um, she's been having struggles with infections. Mm. And the infections, the bacteria, they like minerals. They eat mm. the magnesium. So when you stress, the, the magnesium gets depleted. When your magnesium gets depleted, then your body's looking for magnesium. So it's like, well, I'm going to go for potassium and sodium then, which is the next ones, to keep you energized. It's your electrical system. You, without it, you don't have electricity. So you need minerals because it helps with the water. It helps transport the messages. <laughs> so <laughs> all these little things, everybody always says, is there a magic pill? Oh, there's no magic pill. <laughs> there's no magic pill. What there is, is finding out there's a core basic thing that I would suggest everybody do, which is one, get enough good water. Uh, that means like spring water, filtered water, um, distilled water if you're putting your minerals back into it, uh, well water, um, <laughs> tap water. The well water in Brentwood tastes terrible. Yeah, I wouldn't drink... Oh, the well water does? Yeah, it's nasty. Oh, oh, that's terrible. It must have a lot of mineral compound in it then. That's probably what's going on. It's got a lot of salt but, in it too. Yeah, so those minerals, I mean, our bodies live on those minerals. And without those minerals, we're not getting all the information sent around our body. And um, so getting her the minerals, making sure to get her the plant-based diet, getting her the eggs um, for the lecithin, the good cholesterol. Because if you have good cholesterol, your body will not produce bad cholesterol. The only reason it produces bad cholesterol is because it's looking for cholesterol. Because your brain needs cholesterol to function. <laughs> so there's all these things that nobody told me when I was growing up. That, you know, as I was growing up and dealing with my own issues and then meeting the people that I've met along the way. Um, and working at a health food store for two years with a nutritional therapist who had 22 years knowledge, she just basically kept 
making sure that I got hammered over the head with this information. But to be honest, it was stuff that became crucial parts of my own healing and helping myself and now helping the people. Like for instance, my friend, they have, um, their mom has uh, dementia and it was the flax oil, the flaxseed oil that has helped bring her back, you know, um, you know, and then making sure that she's eating a good nutritional diet of foods that can support her better. And she's absolutely doing so much better. She's communicating again with everybody. Um, her, my, the lady I take care of here, her sister with Alzheimer's just came to visit us. And I saw her a year ago and I was worried. And this year she's doing so much better. She again has been doing more strategic planning with her diet and uh, learning about food combinations because that's another little piece. Um, so food combinations, you wouldn't think that would matter so much, especially when you go to the, you, know, you go to a cafe or you go to a breakfast joint. The first thing they want to give you is a fat, a protein, and a sugar, and they want to give it to you all at the same time: pancakes, eggs, and bacon, and maple syrup. You know, it all tastes great. But then when people wonder why they don't feel good afterwards, it's because it's a really bad combination for our bodies to try to, to work out. Your body's like, oh, yeah, I want that sugar. Oh, forget that protein for like 72 hours. I'm going to handle that for a while over there. And so it's going to go after the carb first. And it's going to put everything else on hold, which is going to get everything else kind of sitting at a standstill and fermenting and not doing anything. So when people get indigestion or gas or acid reflux, it's because they've done those combinations too many times. <laughs> it's like you have to look at the way you're combining your foods. There's definitely a better way to, to digest if that's what somebody wants to do for themselves. Um, and so through all of these little strategies, I've been trying to figure out what's her secret recipe what's my secret recipe, you know, help my husband with his secret recipe, because we all ultimately have our own. But I would say that the core is, is figuring out, you know, am I taking minerals? Am I drinking water? Am I drinking 50% of my body weight in ounces of water a day? So like I weigh one, I weigh about 115 right now. So I should be drinking 60 ounces of water a day. So I ref, I'm about that right now. In order to accurately give your body the fluid it needs to handle stuff and to flush out. Um, it also, I see it with her because with her, I can see when she hasn't had enough water because then the bathroom doesn't happen, you know, or <laughs> she hasn't, she's not feeling good and might have a headache, you know, or she's feeling a little fo foggy. A lot of the, uh, symptoms that a lot of us have on a daily basis is just dehydration, you know, that could be easily solved by drinking a glass of water, you know. Now, all, all I drink is tea and water. I don't drink alcohol. That's... I don't drink juices because those are all sugar. Yep. They taste great, but I don't want to drink calories. Um, that's one of the things with my mom. It drives me bananas. It's like... <laughs> I don't know what it is with the elderly, especially people with cognitive impairment. It's like they have like this massive resistance to drinking water or anything. You know, I will, I will, you know, they get the little, I think they're eight, 10 ounce glasses and you know, you don't fill it up all the way, just like with little kids because they all end up wearing it and she'll have two <laughs> yeah. or three sips and that's it. And the food where she lives is really good. I went there once. They had a family um, Thanksgiving celebration in the memory care. It was hysterical because her friend had three different desserts and didn't remember that she'd had three different desserts. Normally, all their desserts are sugar-free, but their and their food doesn't have salt in it. And it's and it tasted good. Like I'm, I'm not a huge salt person, but you know, probably normal salt usage. And I didn't feel the need to put the salt on. So that I thought that was really good. Their food is really good, but man, getting right. those people to drink stuff. Yeah. My mom's nutrition, just for people to know why this is probably super important. My dad was the worst eater and I'm going to offend the Midwest, but that's okay. He was <laughs> meat and potatoes. He would have been very happy with a fried hamburger patty, 
mashed potatoes and either corn or peas every night for dinner for the rest of his life. Yeah. First off, that's not very healthy to begin with. And they didn't eat that way, but that's kind of, you know, they had more processed foods. They had, oh my God, the Wonder Bread. <laughs> oh, no. that stuff's the worst i make yes. my own bread i was going to ask That's you good. about the seeds because i put in a mixture of hemp and flax seed and there's like but it gets baked in so does that mm -hmm. so since they're not actually, that's, that's actually what we do we do okay. um we use um buckwheat instead of um so for flowers we use everything gluten-free but we'll do buckwheat we'll do tapioca we'll do um chia seed, flax seed, hemp, grind it all together and make a flour out of it. My husband is the best at making muffins, cakes, and breads that are completely gluten-free, sugar-free, and dairy-free. Oh my. Because I'm allergic to everything, so I can't eat any of it. So he has to make all these special recipes. And what we found is that when you use spice, like pumpkin pie spice, or cinnamon, mm. or ginger, or like anything like, <laughs> yeah, you throw any of that in there, it's amazing what it does to the flavor, you know? And you use a little baking soda or cream of tartar if you want it to fluff, you know, plump up and get fluffy. He's made, made muffins and cakes and breads that look just like muffins, cakes, and breads, but they don't have any of the bad stuff in them. Well, I and, make my own, my, uh huh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to tell you, uh, he just found out D-Manos and Cranberry. Cranberry and D-Manos. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever used it for, we're going to be off topic for a second, for a UTI. Because they get UTIs because they don't tell us when they're not feeling good and stuff happens and whatever. They get UTIs. They're not drinking enough water. They're not hydrating enough. Um, and so I was like, well, how do I put stuff in our food to keep UTIs away? And he said, well, D-Manos is a glucose. I'm going to put some in the next batch that I make and see what it tastes like. And he sweetened that stuff with D-Manos and cranberry. And it hmm. was fantastic. You're going to have to have him send me a recipe and I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> actually, now I'm you know curious. What? I will. I will get the recipe. Uh, he actually was so proud of himself because the other day he never remembers the recipe. So I'm always like, okay, let's recreate it. He goes, I don't remember. I'm like, okay. All right. Well, if you were going to make this bread or make this muffin, what would that look like? I don't remember. I'm like, okay. So I guess I have to wait till the next time that he's feeling up to it. So <laughs> then he goes in there and does it again the next day. <laughs> and it turns out perfect. And he goes, I remember the recipe this time. So That's we wrote funny. it down. And this was just two days ago. So we are working on recipe books right now um, to help because I don't eat out. Um, very rarely I have to, it has to be an organic, uh, locally sourced kind of restaurant. It has to be, um, somebody that's not afraid to be gluten-free <laughs> because I just, I can't. So, and then doesn't use MSG, you know, preferably if they're going to use salt, I would prefer it to be pink sea salt because that's the only one that I want in my body. And, uh, because it's minerals and, so we had to start creating our own stuff. So as we were creating our own stuff and everybody's making fun of us, they're like, oh, you don't come out with us. Oh, you just sit there. You don't order anything off the menu. What's the matter with you? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what's wrong. I don't want to be in a hospital or in my bed ever again like that. So <laughs> like, I'm going to do everything I can and try to create recipes that help people like me that want to be better and feel better and find a better way for themselves and still have stuff that tastes good. It's not just oh, here, let me hand you some sandpaper. <laughs> Go ahead and eat it. <laughs> yeah, my daughter, you know? my daughter's got Crohn's disease and in the <sighs> process of um, being diagnosed, they thought she was gluten intolerant, celiac disease. So I went to the grocery store, not knowing what you just told me about. Everything's made with rice and we bought, this expensive gluten-free bread. And I think sandpaper might have tasted better. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it just, it was, the texture was weird. The flavor was just not quite, it was just the whole thing was like, something was wrong with it. It was missing the gluten, obviously. <laughs> but I started making my own bread because when I went on my journey to lose the weight, I had obviously cut out all, a lot of the sugar and backtracking half a step to my mom's side, 
my mother was the worst. She has broken more teeth on taffies and caramels and candy. She was always, she would literally have breakfast. She would have like a little six ounce glass of juice with breakfast and immediately fill that glass up with Diet Coke. She would drink two liters of Diet Coke every single day. And it's like, and I've, I learned years ago, they think the phosphorus is, might be one of the reasons there's more it, cancers. It's like everything I've learned in the last 10 years is what you're putting in is a lot more important than just how you look or how much you weigh or how it tastes. I mean, it's yep. obviously going to taste good because why bother? <laughs> exactly (laughs) you know but it's like i've learned and i've got the same wicked sweet tooth as her but i've learned to cut it back i can i can keep it tamed i cannot i've had nutritionists say well just just go cold turkey and my family's like nope no no (laughs) that will cause murder no 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 we're not living with that (laughs) and it's fine and it's like i have a couple of vices that i don't think i'll ever be able to get rid of but i you know we cook all our own food Despite my husband's grumblings, we do eat a couple of vegetarian dishes a week and chicken. We do eat quite a bit of eggs. So I guess I'm going to have to get used to more like soft boiled or I like the yolks. Yeah, I like poached. I like the yolks a little harder, but I can probably learn. I've learned to soft it as long as you keep it. Don't cook it hard because what happens is when we cook hard the egg yolk, that's when it activates the cholesterol. So you want it to be as loose or soft. Okay. So if you can soft. slow cook it, you know, you can even do slow cook hard boiled eggs too. And, and do just this to where they're soft in the middle, not, not runny, but you know, to where they're starting. To, yeah. I don't like them when they're like that either. <laughs> <laughs> when they're a little closer to flaky. <laughs> Got it. I hope, I hope that's a good soft. description for everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know everybody asks me how I cook my eggs. To be honest, the way that I find best now is I put a little bit of water in my, in my pan, just enough to where I can open the egg, throw it in there. And, uh, there's water surrounding the egg. So now the egg is going to stay in its place and cook right there. The white, and then I cover it so that the white cooks really fast. And then the yellow starts to cook from the underneath, but not very hard. And then I pull it off when it's reached that level of, okay, the whites are cooked. I feel good about where it's at now. <laughs> it might take 15, 20 minutes, but I cook it on low, cook it somewhere between medium to low and just watch it to make sure it doesn't overcook. That's and then you just those eggs. I'm proud of it off the thing. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, to me, it, it's changed a lot for me too. Um, all of this, this way of eating has been, it has been the answer for me. Uh, I, I know now Another step is also finding out what foods are you might have allergies to or triggers to. And there's a test called the Everly Well test, which I recommend you can do it in the mail. Um, they send you the kit and then um, they get the results back and can tell you what you might have allergens to that you didn't realize you were having sensitivities. So for me, I was having cinnamon and ginger and apple cider vinegar and chicken and salmon and found out that I was allergic to chicken and salmon and found out I was allergic to ginger and cinnamon. And I already knew I was allergic to dairy and sugar and me never got along. So, (laughs) you know, you just, you start to figure out what is best for you. And through this whole new journey with Anne, myself and others that I've been helping, I've realized that everybody's journey is going to be different. Everybody's going to find what works best for them. But there is a core, you know, making sure you're having water (laughs) and breathing. Those two things. Those are important. Um, (laughs) Those two things are very important. And then working your way into um, the mind diet, I feel, is is the most balanced diet. It's the most balanced diet because it covers a little bit of something from all the categories. Um, And then figuring out which foods you do the best on and then how you're going to combine them. So just recently I went on a 21 day vegetable only fast Ooh. just because I wanted to help reset my every, about every six months I do that where I do like a vegetable only just reset, you know, especially after Christmas. So, um, and you where don't I lose all your energy. Oh no, actually I have more energy. I'm oh, bouncing see. off the walls. 
bouncing off the walls. And I wasn't even eating fats or any, I was just doing primarily vegetables. I came up with a bunch of different, I came up with a 21 day plan with recipes and stuck to it for those 21 days. I didn't do fruit. I had one pear the whole entire time. And um, because I was really just like, okay, I need to just back everything off and see where we're at. And uh, it was a jump start to feeling, to just continually feeling to be feeling great again, you know? Because after Christmas, you start to feel like, oh my gosh, something's not right. <laughs> it's probably all that sugar I had at Christmas that I wasn't supposed to have. <laughs> and I need to, to clean it out. Is. It is, you know? And we've even come up with strategies for that, but still, it's, it's a challenge. <laughs> my strategy for avoiding too much sugar, first off, I have to, I have a picture I just put up of when I was at my absolute lowest weight after losing a hundred pounds. And I look at that and I think, oh, I need to lose weight. So there's a reminder, but uh, I, I remind myself, okay, well, if I'm going to have this decadent dessert and I was the kind of person prior to the weight loss where, you know, they'd say, oh, it's so, it's so rich. You just need a bite or two. And I'd be like, <laughs> a bite or two, uh-uh, I need the whole thing. <laughs> I'm not quite that bad anymore, but I just think, well, how many hours am I going to have to ride my bike or walk the dogs or go to spin mm -hmm. or do weight training to burn this off? Do I have that kind of time? No, I do not. So let me just literally have two or three bites and walk away. I can't, I can't have two or three bites and let it sit there because then it'll disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's like, I just, I try to have a little bit and I've, I've gotten into the the darker chocolate, the, the yeah. higher percentage cacao. Mm -hmm. And I did have, I think one that was like an 80%. That was a little too bitter. It was like, there is not enough sweet in this to make this worthwhile. Oh no. So I think it's like the 75%. It's just enough chocolate flavor and just enough sweet. Have that with a little bit of tea and then just drink some water. And then, then the brain's like, oh, I had some chocolate and a little sugar. Great. Perfect. So you just, you have to kind of just retrain your taste buds. You can't just do it Absolutely. overnight. But no, so you, um, nope. Cannot retrain. It doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> no, and you have to keep retraining them. It's like the dog. Absolutely. Once, you, once you let them <laughs> eat something off the counter, you're doomed. I call it the beast. Yep. It's the beast inside that's talking to me that I have to like, no, you're not in charge today. I am. <laughs> That's what happens if I don't have a good night's sleep and my brain is going donuts and cakes and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, shut up. You just need a nap. You just it, need a nap. Yeah. Like and, and usually that's what I'll try to do because it's, it's so annoying when your brain is going, you know, feed me this garbage because I need energy. And you're like, that ain't going to help. Just shut up. It's, you know, I know I need sleep. So I try, it's usually it's a day when it's like, oh, great. I have 50 things to do in time for 35 of them. But <laughs> You know, I, I don't have the donut because I know it won't help, but I did read something recently that was kind of funny. It's like, you, know, you go back to your, your cave person ancestry, and apparently I must come from a line of people that were very intelligent because nothing in nature that is sweet is also poisonous. That's what I've read. <laughs> so I'm like, so that is why my line of people love sugar and have just been around forever because. <laughs> never ate anything poisonous. That's good. <laughs> I was like, I like that. My, I just picture my like inner sh cave woman eating all the yummy, sweet, whatever they had back then. <laughs> anything you could find, the berries, the, all those berries. I love berries. That you was know, one of and It's crazy. Berries are, especially blueberries, they're one of the number one antioxidants for helping uh, your brain, for helping your stem cell growth, You're helping you produce your own stem cells. Hmm. So literally blueberries and they need to be wild blueberries. Wild blueberries are the best um, because um, they haven't been sprayed. They're not genetically modified and, and they um, have the most antioxidants in them uh, because they are, they haven't been modified in any way. You know, they're just wild blueberries. <laughs> I don't so, know that we can get wild blueberries here. We can get blueberries and we can get organic ones. Now I'm going to have to look. But do you have a... Where, what kind of grocery stores do you have there? Uh, well, we have a Trader Joe's is close by and then Safeway. Safeway. Oh, so you have a Fred Meyer? Yeah, I think no? Fred, Safeway and Fred Meyer's are the same. Is it? Because Kroger's the same too. Um, so basically we have, we have like the, 
the typical grocery store and then Trader Joe's is like Whole Foods, only smaller. Okay, so look for, there's a blue package. Um, I think it's called Highlands, but they That's, do wild blueberries. That sounds familiar. I will Highlands, look. and it's a blue package. But uh, the antioxidant in the blueberry is, it's absolutely phenomenal. And for helping to regenerate your own stem cells, which can help everything <laughs> kind of function better <laughs> on its own. It's like when we were getting ready to go for stem cell therapy, they were telling us to have a cup of blueberries a day for 30 days, you know, to prepare for the, to help regenerate our own stem cell growth. That's so a lot I of blueberries. I was just picturing what the other end of the blueberries looks like. I know, right? <laughs> this is what happens when you have somebody with Crohn's disease. You don't, you don't have too much shyness about talking about poop. <laughs> oh, let me tell you what. Yeah. We could talk about that subject all day long. I'm not, I, I, I'm not afraid of that topic. We, we, yeah, I mean that right there is an indicator for so many things. <laughs> so it's like, um, well, you were talking honest, about com. Oh, sorry, you were talking about combinations. My oh, husband yeah. has a lot of heartburn, and so mm. now I'm going to start paying attention to the combinations. I know a lot of it is he also lost a lot of weight, and he put it all back on. Shame on him. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it is you know he carries all of his weight right in his abdomen area so that yeah. fat is pushing up on the stomach which causes mm -hmm. the i know because that's what i used to get to come back mm -hmm. um but sometimes there's the way he eats must i bet you it's combinations now i'm gonna have to pay attention i would say so um also there's there's some things that you can do naturally to help fix the stomach acids uh and i know you might have heard this one before celery juice <laughs> celery juice actually helps your body uh, regenerate the stomach acids, the hydrochloric acid in your stomach, which is what helps break down proteins. Hmm. So a, a lot of us are twisted. We don't have enough stomach acids because we've been drinking sodas or we've been doing the wrong food combinations. And then our stomach gets all out of whack and basically forgets how to break stuff down the way it's supposed to. So because we're not giving it what it needs, um, I have a friend who would have a two liter of soda every single day, every day. That was my His mom. stomach is upside down, no vegetables, no nothing. And he's got so many issues, so many issues. And I'm just, you know, if you would just have celery water every morning, I kid you not, celery water, that's all it, go get some celery and blend it up and strain it and drink it. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound that great. Well, but it probably doesn't it, have a lot of flavor because celery is pretty bland. It's pretty bland. It actually has sodium in it, but it's a good sodium. It's the sodium that our body can use. So it's really good for the brain. Um, it's a mineral salt. So it helps your body with the production of your salts, which is what you absolutely need to break down proteins. So um, that's another thing that could help. I would also wonder if, if when he is eating, you do like a journal make notes. Okay. So today we had this for breakfast, this for lunch, this for dinner. We had a snack, whatever. Then the next day, make notes. And then the, when he wakes up or after he eats and he notices he has that reflux, look back three days and look at everything you've had those in those past three days. Look at all the combinations, all the different foods, because either one of two things is happening. Either one, there's a trigger in there for him that he's having an allergic response to. So his body, body is creating inflammations to fight it. Or two, it's a combination and he can't, his stomach acids aren't breaking the food down properly. So those are some things that I would do, that I would look into. Um, getting that Everly Well test to see if there's any food allergies, um, absolutely. Because then once you identify what is actually causing you problems and you stop those things, it's amazing how, how you're like, whoa, so I stopped having the ginger and the swelling went away in my foot. <laughs> You know, it's like, what? <laughs> I've just, ever since I went on this journey to lose weight, and that's, it, it was just literally, I'm losing the weight so I don't become diabetic because I can't deal with that. You know, and I've learned how it affects your brain and how, you know, certain foods cause inflammation, which is bad for the kid with the Crohn's. And it's like, I feel like I need to be a nutritionist. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and it's it, for me, um, when this whole started my whole life, I'd been dealing with endometriosis and chronic fatigue and allergies, but then 
and uh, 10 years ago when I came down and was in a bed for a month, I, I got hit all these things all at once hit me. And when that happened, I was right in the middle of a journey of working with a nutritionalist. And I was like, that's what I'm going to have to do because I am not going to live this way anymore. And so it's been more of a journey of how do I find the supports, the aids that help me bridge the gap until I can figure out what's causing the imbalance. Because what I found out recently is that a lot of my imbalances that they manifested in my body in these disorders were from traumas that I had from a child. <laughs> and you know, little memories that stuck with me that found a way to stay in my body, whether it was an injury or an illness or something happened traumatic or whatever. And so through this journey, I've been discovering that nutritional support is absolutely a huge part of bridging the gap while you're trying to figure out how you can emotionally support yourself through this and how you can get past some of your things that you hold on to because maybe there's a memory tied to that chocolate chip cookie, you know, <laughs> or maybe you think of grandma when you want to make ice cream, you know, I, I did. And for me, um, those things were hurting me so <laughs> I had to stop. Um, it, it's been quite the journey trying to figure it all out. And I definitely think that more education needs to be put on it. More of an emphasis needs to be put on it. I think that pharmaceutical and doctors need to stop worrying about whether or not we're taking jobs away from them because we're not. We're actually expanding their job. We're expanding their ability to work with a person on a more individual le level, you know, mm -hmm. instead of treating us like we're in a box and each person is exactly the same because we're not. Each one of us has our own triggers, our own environmental stressors, our own everything, you know? Yeah, it's just like so, when they say, when you've met some one person with Alzheimer's, you've met one person with Alzheimer's because everybody's no. brains are different. And yes. you, you, you can't, you know, it's like my mom doesn't react like somebody else. We've been on this journey for about 20 years. I know some people whose family members, they diagnosed three years, they're gone. I'm like, oh you don't realize how lucky you are and um it's just it's just so different that's just yeah. everybody you know and then as the disease progresses with my mom it's you know she, she's been in the memory residence for a month shy of three years and for the first two and a half years she was really easy i mean for those people who are not familiar with how a memory residence works, there's the rent. And then there's six for us in California, I'm assuming it's pretty similar nationwide. There's six levels of care. Each one obviously costs more money because there's more of their time and time required to take care of your loved one. They still have my mom on level one, which I am, I will be shocked if that does not change next month because they have to shower her. They have to dress her. They have to, like I was there yesterday. She said, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. So I said, okay. I opened the bathroom door. Here's the bathroom. She's looking at me like, why am I in here? And I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and I said, yes. you, you said you wanted to use the bathroom before we went out. Oh, okay. So I'm supposed to go in here. I'm like, oh, goody. Step-by-step yeah. instructions on how to use the toilet. This is how I want to spend my afternoon. Right. Okay. So there's a <laughs> lot more care involved but she was so easy. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, about nine months ago, she just started having, I think she just went off a cliff with the disease. It attacked a part of her brain that yeah. was more obvious, I suppose. I'm not sure how all that works. And she's now she gets extremely combative. She can get violently combative. She's drawn blood on my husband, on caregivers. She's not easy anymore. Aww. And it's just fascinating. And it's like, so you're tippy toeing around. She needs help, but she doesn't want yeah. the help. So it's like, oh yeah, yeah. So it's very interesting. I'll have to you talk know, to their their nutritionist about because I know they're like I said, they feed them three meals and at least two snacks. And I know the snacks a lot of times, especially in the warmer weather, is like popsicles and jello, and it's all sugar free, which sugar. is sugar. Yeah. You know, they take the sugar out. Oh, they one, do. Okay. One time they brought over little dishes of ice cream and that's one of my my weaknesses and i had a scratchy throat so i'm like well it's not a very you know it's like literally a serving so i'll be i will live and it was fat free and sugar free and it didn't taste very good oh yeah 
So they're trying, they, they at least aren't just pumping them full <clears throat> of sugar. Cause when my dad was on hospice, you know, he was, he had diabetes and he did not want to go back on dialysis, which was fine. Um, they were the hospice nurses like if he wants pancakes with syrup go for it and i'm like but he gets okay. nasty when his blood sugar's out of whack <laughs> i know right like who's gonna handle that <laughs> yeah but you know he was nasty if you didn't give it to him so you were kind of like you know you gotta manage the moods totally yeah. manage so, so and that's what i'm trying to do with my mom but it's not easy well, since food and water might be, because I know that that can be a challenge getting somebody to eat something. So one of the things that I've come up with, or I know a lot of people have come up with this, this is a way that I found has helped me though, um, using essential oils. I don't know if you use essential oils, but um, certain, certain oils can be very calming and actually very protective to the brain. Um, I should try that when she's having a crab, crabby mood. Yeah. Like chamomile, lavender, lemon balm, um, they're all things that could be very, uh, very helpful at calming. I sent, a, I sent over a few essential oils that can help in the papers that I sent you. And um, I was actually going to put together a first aid, what I call my first aid kit. So whenever I go to the hospital, we can't really give her anything too much because they get involved. And so we have to we have to find ways to work around. So, <laughs> I'm, so I'm aware. I, so I usually bring my battery of essential oils with me. <laughs> and, and then I also bring minerals. And so if I can't put something on in her water or um, in her mouth or in her feeding tube, then I will, I'll put it on her skin because your skin absolutely absorbs that stuff as well. So um, there are some herbs and essential oils that can be very protective to the brain and to the myelin sheath and can also be very calming, can help with cognitive, can help with um, com combative attitudes. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if it'll work, but maybe <laughs> there's a chance. I can, I can tell you the Seroquel is not working. No. <laughs> I'm about to take her off all of her meds. Although yeah. some doctors aren't agreeing with me, but I'm the, I'm the healthcare power of attorney. So I don't know why I can't have that say. And just, I think you should have that say. <laughs> I've had nothing but issues with her primary care physician. I mean, literally he's fired and I'm filing a formal complaint and I'm wow. looking for a concierge doctor um, membership so that the residents can call like She fell on December 30th. And they, you know, in an abundance of caution, and I have no problems with what her residents did. You know, she was ble bleeding from the head, which we all know heads bleed like. Yeah. <laughs> and she did end up with seven stitches, but the residents, for some reason, they, I don't know. I took my old phone number that I disconnected because I got tired of robocalls and solicitors and paying 60 bucks a month to be harassed. So I canceled the home phone landline. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then two months later when they had me, you know, check her paperwork, I was like, oh my gosh, take this phone number off. They call and it's disconnected. So she goes to the ER by herself. They do a CT scan. It's an over an $11,000 bill. Like, oh why are you doing gosh. a CT scan on a, <sighs> on a woman with advanced Alzheimer's? Why Whoa. did the hospital not call me? It, it's yeah. just like, I just... I need somebody in between the traditional medical profession and me to help take care of my mom because her doctor's not helping me. He makes me stressed and angry and I want to murder him. Yeah. And so when my blood pressure is skyrocketing and, you know, if, and I'm all agitated because he's making me mad, then my mom's all, it's just, it's like, it just, oh, it's a no. snowball of negative. It's like, this is not how we need to take care of this. We need calm and peaceful and sweet and nice and yeah. i don't get that when i take her to the doctor so i have this laundry list of things i need to take care of um but you know i would like to try her just like all on the cbd stuff because i've heard that's lots a of, great idea i've talked yes. to somebody about alzheimer's and cbd and um you know she's got the pain with the walking so they put her on tylenol and tylenol with codeine and it's like ugh, oh, you, know? you don't need like, that it's like, and I'm not sure it always works. Yesterday was yeah. great. Other days she takes two steps and she's complaining, takes two yeah. steps. And she, you know, and it's like, and she's not complaining to be a problem. It hurts. Yeah. I could tell it hurts her. 
Mm -hmm. You know, so then of course, as we are wont to do, it's like, it hurts when I walk, so I'm going to sit. So that just makes the whole thing worse. So yeah, I need a whole, I need a whole new approach to how to help her. And the first step is finding a better way to deal with her symptoms. So um, navigating it and the navigating the decline and the changes daily is such a challenge for us for too. Sure. Yeah. And, well, and it's, Every day you got to come up with a new strategy. <laughs> so yeah, like, that's what okay. I was going to say. It's like as soon as you think, okay, I got this dialed in, boom, right. they change it. It's like, yeah, something else changes on why? you. Why are you torturing and me? And we it's actually like, wrote, <laughs> we wrote a song called Bang, 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 because literally I would say, I'm just going to bang my head here. And so my husband heard me say that and he said, well, I wrote a song for you. It's called Bang, Bang, Bang. <laughs> it's all about being able to bang your head. <laughs> Which is not good for your brain, so don't do no, that. No, <laughs> not so much. But if you're gonna bang but, your head, use a pillow. <laughs> but when you're dealing with all these these challenges, the last thing you need is somebody who's not being cooperative. Or, you know, when we go to the hospital, they've got such a protocol of how to handle um, patients when they come in that literally I have to handcuff myself to her gurney and say, I am not leaving her side. I will stay with her all the way through, and you are going to let me. And they have, they let me, they do. I don't let myself go. I'm like, no, I'm staying. I'm only five foot two. So I'm like, well, me too. <laughs> I'm like, you can't convince me otherwise. This woman can't speak. She can't take care of herself. She can't tell you what's going on. The only one who can talk for me, her is me. <laughs> so, you know. Well, and they should what, be appreciative of, of your being the advocate for her. My neighbor who was an angel and helped me get the stitches out of mom's head after 42 oh. days. She, we, she, we were talking in the driveway and she was like, she's an ER nurse. And she was like, normally overnight we'll have two or three elderly patients with cognitive impairment. She goes, last night we had six. And I looked at her and I said, I hate to tell you this, brace yourself. It's getting, just, it's just going to get started. worse. Yeah. And, and you know, all, She's like, they're trying to get out of bed and they're pulling out IVs and, and like the hospital has no clue how to deal with them. They've got an emergency mm -hmm. that they're trying to, trying to take care of this emergency and this person's got all this other stuff. It's just like, it's just And that protocol that fits the person next door does not fit the person over here, you know? Mm -mm. Like it's, it's to the point because of the neurodegenerative disease, we decided to also look at everything that could be affecting her. You know, she had heavy metal toxic toxicity of 700% of aluminum and mercury. So I had to detox that out of her. I Oof. had to detox the heavy metals out. Then Do you we, know how she ended up with that? Um, we're guessing that it was triggered from her family had a seafood business. So that's one. Um, number two, she worked and lived on a military installation for five years. So she was exposed to a lot of heavy metals there. She's also a traveler. She traveled a lot into different countries. So she was always traveling, uh, vaccinations, you know, making sure that she was ready for those trips. And so, you know, that's a lot of breakdown on the immunal system. So that's just what we're guessing. Plus she has Rocky Mountain spotted fever and Lyme and Epstein-Barr oh, and mycoplasma and biofilm. It's like, you know what? she has all of it. <laughs> so if you want to talk triggers of what happened, there's so many things that are, when you say food is not just eating to look a certain way or to diet because you want to be, look skinny. It's about being healthy and about supporting this system, this universe that's like we're walking around with <laughs> because basically there's a war going on inside <laughs> and you're trying to figure out how to keep it happy. Because I think the body just wants to stay in homeostasis, right? Pretty much all the time. So if we are constantly throwing stuff at it and it's having to combat that, then it's not where it wants to be either. It's like, you are totally messing up my day over here. <laughs> I had plans to do this and now I got to deal with that. <laughs> you know? That sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, and using myself as a guinea pig, I for the last 10 years have absolutely used myself as a guinea pig to figure out what gives me a headache, what makes me sick, what made me have allergies. And I figured it out. I don't have any of those issues anymore. I don't have 
headaches, migraines, allergies. I don't fight the same things anymore. Now it's all about maintenance and making sure that I stay well and stay in this happy place that I'm in. And if I, if I do do something, if I do do something that's, my phone's going to die. If I do do something that um, is not good for me, then I know the next day I probably need to fast, drink a lot of water, try to calm my body back down. I usually tell people when they're feeling sick or feeling anything off, stop eating. Stop eating for 24 hours. Just throw water at it and flush it out of your system because that'll help it. That'll help the, the, the healing uh, and the recovery go faster. Um, and if you can stop it for three days, you'll absolutely get over whatever it is you got for three days. Don't do anything but water. And I know that sounds crazy, but it absolutely, you get more energy. Your body has more opportunities of fighting and doing what it's supposed to do. And that's what's working for me. That's what I see is working for her. That's what I see working for everybody here. And everybody has their own little menus. <laughs> we have all kinds of menus going on at all times of the day <laughs> because we all eat different foods. And then once a week, we do food together. <laughs> so we're like, okay, we'll pick, a, we'll pick something that works for all of us and we'll do that, that thing that night together. But most of the time, um, we just kind of all do our own little meal plans because we've all learned that we have our own things that make us feel good. Makes sense. Yeah. So we all so have to experiment on ourselves to figure out where we're, where we feel the best. Yeah. Which if you're taking care of somebody else, like I'm taking, you know, I don't have to take care of my mom daily. So that helps. But you know, I, I always knew her, her diet Coke habit was really bad and the sugar habit was really bad. And then I've learned how, tremendously harmful that probably was to her brain because she's only 77 so she's got the advanced alzheimer's at kind of i think she has early onset alzheimer's which was probably from a brain trauma from a car accident and a horrible horrible diet so before your phone dies do you have a last tip for people dealing with loved ones with alzheimer's or somebody that might be early diagnosed with dementia or alzheimer's Oh, did your phone die? You lost your audio. Yeah, I don't know what happened to your Can audio. You there you go. <laughs> oh, no. Hold on a second. Let me try this. Okay. There we go. Are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. I'm all plugged in. So do you have a last minute tip for somebody that's either newly diagnosed or somebody that's caring for somebody with Alzheimer's? Um, I would say first thing would be to look at their diet for sure. Look at food triggers. Uh, make sure that they're getting good sources of omega-3, 6, and 9, like fish, uh, hemp oil, um, CBD, um, what's another good one? Flax, chia seeds. Those are all really great sources of omegas. Um, make sure that they're getting plenty of water and, um, and then also look at how many greens they're eating because those antioxidants in the greens, everybody always laughs at me. I'm like, my parents would say, eat your vegetables. And I would laugh and I'm like, ha ha ha. And I never realized how important that was until the last five years. Um, it is absolutely the most important thing to make sure that you're having enough vegetables. And my rule of thumb is 80, 20. So when I look at my plate, I want 80% vegetables, 20% whatever else. So if I'm going to do, if I'm doing a protein, like today I did an egg, I did two eggs this morning and I don't do eggs a lot. I do it when I need it, when I feel I need it. And <clears throat> I listen to my body. So, um, you do eggs and greens. You don't do eggs and carbohydrates. <laughs> you do eggs and greens. Greens, by the way, can go with everything. And they That's should. That's true. I feel greens, better if my breakfast includes some veggies. You need a green, even if it sprouts. Grab some, some sprouts, some broccoli sprouts. Broccoli sprouts are really great for digestion too. Um, so it's like throwing in those little accent pieces. If you're going to have a grapefruit, then have a couple of sprouts with it 
okay? Because that'll help digest it better. If you're going to have eggs, have some spinach with it. It's going to help digest that food better. Um, and then make sure that you're doing at least 80% greens on your plate every time you eat, like, or 80% vegetables. I know that's going to be hard because people are going to be like, so can I have a tomato? So can I have corn? So can I have carrots? So can I have white potatoes? And I'm like, those are all carbs. I'm like, sure, you can have all those things, but <laughs> maybe you should start with greens. <laughs> yeah, start with the green ones. I have a tip for people who, when they hear the word kale, their nose wrinkles up and they go, uh, And I'm from Northern California. I have, I, until the last couple of years, I'd never had collard greens. It's not, it's a Southern thing, right? Yeah. Collard greens <laughs> are much better than kale. I agree. But you know what else? It's how you cook them. Because um, I found with the kale that if I just steam them just a little bit and soften them up and then add some pink sea salt, I am saying pink sea salt, not table salt, not white salt, not any other kind of salt, only pink sea salt because it's minerals. They are, there's uh, 88 minerals in pink sea salt and your brain needs those minerals. Your body needs those minerals. So if you do, um, the pink sea salt in your mix with the kale and some, you steam it, you'd be surprised how much better those kale, that kale is going to taste. I don't it mind the even... taste. It's just the, sometimes their leaves are just, they're thick and they're rough and I'll have to try steaming them, but Steam if, you really, them. if you're really anti-kale, try collard greens. Something that Whole Foods taught me, because Whole Foods would have this little kale, blueberry, salad mix that was my favorite that I would go get. And I asked them, I said, how in the heck did you get the kale to be like this? And they said, oh, we just splash steam it before we mix it with all the berries. So it still had a little teeny bit of a crunch, but not really. It was softer, not feeling cooked, but just in the middle part. And it softened it up and actually made it more fun, you know, cause I'm with you. I'm the same way. I'd much rather put it in a smoothie or cook it with uh, like, I'll, I'll cook it with other vegetables. I do a lot of fat flash heating with my vegetables. Um, so yeah, I would say definitely get yourself some good fat, eat some more greens, cook your kale and, uh, drink some really good source of water. Make sure you're not having, I don't think tap water is the best. I think tap water is really bad and you probably should stay away from it unless it's really got a good clean health to it. <laughs> Or go look at the uh, the minerals and look at the stuff that's in it first before you drink the water. The water in um, San Francisco, t the tap water in San Francisco tastes amazing. But I don't live in San Francisco. I live in the suburbs way out from San Francisco. <laughs> and it tastes horrible. Horrible. <laughs> it's, and it's from two different sources, so that's, that's why. But oh, yeah. when I went to San Francisco State, you could drink out of any water fountain, and it was refreshing. It tasted great. But right. I, well, I, and make sure you check your sources because water really shouldn't taste like anything. So um, clean water just tastes like clean water, you know. And so if there's something in that, I, I, I would say go look it up on their site because they have to tell you what's in their water. So go find out what's in the site before you drink it because a good, good water source is definitely key. We actually have Anne on, um, it's called an Espere machine and it hydrant it puts hydrogen in the water so her water is actually o3 so we're giving her hydrogenated water interesting yeah. it's structured water interesting. so that that's a whole other topic but <laughs> <laughs> that's another show <laughs> so we had hydrogenated water we had celery water my water yeah. is all filtered because like i said i cringe when my friend's like oh no i'm i'm used to tap water it's like Ugh. no it's nasty <laughs> no thank you <laughs> i mean it might it might be better for them because they're not like i have a reverse osmosis system so it takes everything out that's even better reverse osmosis would be good too um i've had that as long for... as it's putting is it putting it's not putting any minerals back in oh, i'll have to check so if it's not you're you probably would need to or you'd want to look into putting some minerals in there if it's taking it all out i'll definitely so check machine, under that yeah, ours takes it out, but then we have another machine that puts it back in, puts our minerals in so that we know it's our minerals. <laughs> so we know where the minerals are coming from. 
so many things to keep healthy, but it's so worth it because like you said, you don't want to be in bed incapacitated. I do not want to end up like my mother. Somebody right. explained to her, you have to take your pants off and you take your underwear off and now you sit on the toilet. <sighs> Never thought I'd have to explain past uh, potty training my daughter how to use the toilet. <laughs> I know. Isn't it crazy? It's just, it's this life we live now, right? And there's 64 million unpaid caregivers yep. in the country. So that and that's just, the ones they know about. I bet you that right? number is actually higher. I'm sure it is too. And I don't see in what they're saying is that it's going to double and triple within the next 10 years. So you're, <laughs> that's a lot of people. I guess I'm glad I'm at the begin or I'm at the early stage of this tsunami because, you know, my mom's got advanced Alzheimer's. So by the time it doubles and triples, I will yeah. probably be done with my caregiving journey other than continuing to produce this podcast to help other caregivers <laughs> yes. to share all this wonderful knowledge. So that's, you know, I'm but really you guys can put me out of business that. by keeping your brains healthy. <laughs> it's good. No, it actually, um, you know what? And that's, that's, I guess what I'll end on. I'm, I'm doing a book, a journal. It's going to be called the I Care Journal. And, um, basically how it started was it was a journal I created for myself, create, ask, receive, and expand was, is my mission, create, ask, receive, and expand. And she so sent that to me on the paperwork. <laughs> yeah. So that's on the paperwork, but, uh, that'll be coming out in the spring. It's not a journal of me and my journey. It's a journal that I took my journal and I'm using the stuff that I used to get deeper on myself. And understanding how I could caregive better for myself so that I could be a better caregiver for others. Um, and to identify myself more because I kept getting lost in taking care of her. I kept the balance between me and her was, it was more her than, than me. And my care was going down the tubes and I was getting weak. I was physically getting weaker because I couldn't keep up the demands I was putting on myself. And so in that journey, I discovered that oh my gosh, maybe other people are going through this. And if other people are going through this, how do I help them bridge that gap of finding the overall solution for themselves? So I'm creating a journal that basically used things and tools that helped me figure out for myself what I needed to do to maintain balance, living with my patient and still have a life and still care for myself. And um, that's what I hope this journal will do is to help others do the same thing for themselves. And I hope it'll be a fun fun thing. I don't want it to be something where people go, Oh, I have to do this exercise today. It's not like that. It's more like, here's a bunch of exercises for you to try. Here's a daily journal for you to write in. And here's my suggestions on things you should be looking at as you're going, because as you're going, I, I do an elimination diet to determine what foods aren't working for me and what foods are working for me. But I had to put it in my journal in order to see the patterns. Same with Anne. I created a journal for Anne so that I could figure out what was working for her. So it's all just about how do I figure out how to help others find that for themselves. Well, when you get that done, let's get back yes. together because everybody in my support group seems to have that issue. It's like, I'm, it's hard. Like I go to, I take mom to the doctor and I feel like all they've done is suck the life out of me. They haven't helped yep. her and they've sucked my life away. It's like, this is not working. So I could probably use that journal now. <laughs> I'm working as fast as I can to get it finished. I'm so excited too, because I'll be honest, I've been journaling my whole life and never before have I thought of, thought of it doing it this way and what I've gotten from it and how I am right now, where I've come to now is I'm in such a much better place with her, with Anne, with me, with how to go forward and how to keep doing this and how to keep my energy for me too. And, um, and that, and how to expand into more for more people. Yeah. Like how to do that when you've got one person that's draining everything out of you. Yes, there is a way. <laughs> that's fantastic. I look forward to that. And I very much appreciate all of this wonderful nutritional advice because I really, you know, if you've, if you pay any attention to the research, you know, they've been trying to figure out how to clear out the plaques and tangles and all yeah. that stuff. And now they've, They've pulled way back and they're looking at lifestyle choices, you know, exercising. Yep. So you get your heart rate up, you know, and your, your blood pumping so that it gets more oxygen going and eating right. Cause when I don't exercise, I just love it. When I wake up one day and my body's like, yo, salad, <laughs> veggies, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Been deficient. <laughs> yeah. 
in the holidays. Okay. I'll have some, I'll I hear you. have a salad. Yeah. It's just like my body <laughs> lets me know what it wants, except we don't do the donuts. <laughs> when it says donuts, I mean, it means nap. So <laughs> thank That's you very exciting. much. And I look forward to the journal. I, I look forward to sharing it with you and um, the more journeys that we come up with, with traveling caregivers too, because um, hopefully I will have a place that I might be able to call you in the future and say, Hey, can you help me with this? Cause uh, we're planning on helping people with Alzheimer's, ALS, MS, MND, any kind of neurological thing that they're going through is, is what I want to, you know, I want to help everybody with that. Well, that's awesome.